Welcome to the Powerlifting and Power Ballads podcast, where we bring you a weekly dose of powerlifting news, tips, and training advice with a touch of 80s rock ballads. This podcast is presented by Team Roar Powerlifting, your source of the most comprehensive coaching and meet day preparation. Here are your hosts, Josh Roar and Laura Sturm. Welcome to the Powerlifting and Power Ballads podcast. I am one of your hosts, Laura Sturm. And I'm Josh Rohr. Welcome to episode 102. Hello. Hello. All right, we're going to jump right into the powerlifting situation. So this is a question for you, Josh. If you had to go back to the first time you started training for a powerlifting meet, what would you do differently? Oof. Um, this is a good question. There's a lot I would do differently. I think primarily I would focus more on uh, recovery and doing a little bit of the preventative maintenance stuff that younger people quote unquote don't need to do, or, you know, they think they don't need to do. Um, I would also be more methodical about my training and not just go balls to the wall on everything. Um, thinking that was the best way to get strong fast. Um, I think that set me up for issues and injuries down the road, um, that could have been prevented or at least managed better had I trained smarter early on. So I guess, um, you know, when I was powerlifting or starting out, like powerlifting coaches wasn't really a thing. It was just, you trained with a group of people. Um, so I would probably have, have tried to find a, a group of experienced lifters to train with, um, that knew more about the sport and knew how to plan for longevity in the sport versus just going balls to the wall and, and, you know, getting hurt. And I, I didn't get hurt as a younger lifter, but I, I definitely had some issues later on that carried over from some of the dumb stuff I did early on. So that would be in the price. Yeah. Yeah. I would say like probably not taking myself so seriously and not being so upset with myself every time a meet didn't go, you know, exactly to plan. Cause I, I think maybe I had like two meets that went pretty well to plan or better than planned. But after that, like I'd be mad at myself for pretty much every, every single meet. Yeah. You know, and that's just, you're not having fun at that point. Yeah. It, you know, and different people tick different ways too. like some people really need that, you know, always need to do better, whatever, just to kind of keep them motivated. Other people are just like that same concept just makes them hate it. And then they don't want to do it anymore. So it's a fine line. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of psychology involved internally that you, people need to do to be at that high level and just continue to, to progress and push themselves. Like you almost have to create a narrative sometimes of like what you're doing and like trick yourself into, you know, getting angry about why you got to be better. And, you know, it's, it's a whole probably not healthy thing that a lot of people do. Mm, sports psychology yeah but. like the whole uh peloton skit <laughs> <laughs> yes i love that that is so funny to me yes and it i totally could identify with it and if you're not sure what we're talking about go to youtube and just type in peloton skit from snl i think it is yeah i think it was um, snl but yeah i mean it, that's such a powerlifting thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> to kind of have this uh, inner voice that's maybe not being nice to yourself and um yeah. but at the same point it's like really what that that's just weird and maybe you need some counseling <laughs> yeah I, I can't remember all of them but one of them was like um one of them was like somebody was like going slow or something on the peloton and the, the instructor's like yeah it's not like you need to burn off those five extra donuts you ate this weekend nobody's going to notice and there's something like that just like really nasty stuff <laughs> it's just went on and on it was really funny <laughs> yep but <laughs> and there was also, I think, a bro science uh, episode where he talks about, was it bro science? Bro something, um, where he talks about bro how powerlifters are weird. Are you talking about, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, bro science is a, you know, is bro he, is a, it's a, it's an Instagram, well, I, I think TikTok yeah. too, but yeah, yeah, he's always doing funny videos. Yes. Yeah. There was one about his powerlifters and how, how we're special and different. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure I've seen that one. I've seen a bunch oh. of, he's done a few on powerlifting, but. I, I don't know if I've seen that one specifically, but he's, uh, he, he walks that, that line of being mm -hmm. too, going too far sometimes, um, which, yes, but that's which makes it, brilliant which makes it. it. Yeah, exactly. 
there's yeah. always somebody that's offended by it i'm sure <laughs> gosh you could say everything right and someone's still offended by it so yeah it's okay true. yeah so what's going on in the powerlifting world well uh the last pro series event before the finals for the bench only and the equipped lifters is this weekend it's the ubu in phoenix um that's the last chance for again the bench only both raw and equipped and the equipped full lift power lifters to score points in the pro series um the top lifters in the series go to the finals at the arnold um the raw full power still has the ubu phoenix this weekend but they also have the virginia pro in december um, so they still have two opportunities to score points. So um, we'll know who's going to be in the finals after this weekend for the bench only and the equipped full power. So pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. um, then the other thing that just popped up yesterday, well, let's see, we're recording on Monday. So yesterday, um, Sunday popped up on Sunday, uh, regionals are coming back. So starting okay. in 2023, June through August is going to be regionals. And they just announced that bids are being taken through the end of August 31st. So if anybody is interested in being a meet director for regionals, uh, the bid application is available on usapowerlifting.com. Um, the cool thing about regionals, uh, for people that don't know, uh, basically it's a way to get to nationals if you're not quite able to hit that qualifying total. Um, so how it works is if you place top three in your weight class and division, you get a 50 kilo handicap towards your qualifying total. So let's just say, for example, my weight class and division, the qualifying total is 400 kilos. I'm just making that up, but my best total is 350. If I can total 350 at regionals and place top three, then I get 50 kilos out of my total and my 350. If I total 350 at regionals becomes 400 and I qualify for nationals. So uh, I, I like it. So a lot of people don't like this because they say it's watering it down. I disagree um, because I think this is actually helping the sport because it's forcing lifters to act and coaches to actually compete, do the math, figure out how to place top three and, and work on their attempt selection skills, but also knowing that they still have to get to within 50 kilos of that, of that qualifying total. So you know, if you get fourth place and get within 50 kilos, it doesn't matter. You didn't place top three. You don't get that 50 kilo bump. So mm -hmm. you have to still place top three. So it forces coaches and lifters to learn how to compete at that higher level to, to get to nationals. And I, I love it. I think it's, I think it's awesome. Hmm. Cool. Cause I think, that, I don't, I don't think there's enough of that skill at the local level or not enough practice of that skill at the local level. And this is a way for, you know, those lifters that are right on the bubble of getting to nationals to really have to be in the thick of it and, and compete to, to get those top three spots. I wouldn't a 50 kilo handicap aid, a small lifter, lifter. a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's what I was thinking. It's like, yeah, 50, 50, no matter what. Wow. Yeah. That's, you know, it, it was talked about doing it as a percentage, which would actually mathematically make more sense, Yeah, but that would be very confusing to try to figure out and have a different, True. different handicap for each weight class. And then, you know, it right. would just, it would Math just be is hard lot. enough. Math this is just hard keeps enough. it. Yeah. <laughs> this just keeps it, you know, a lot more simple. Um, you know, so yes, a, a 48 kilo lifter is going to take advantage of this a lot more, but at the same time, there's a lot less 48 kilo lifters than there are bigger weight class lifters anyway. So, you know, if they get a little bit, more of a bump percentage wise, it's still not like we're flooding the the meat with mm -hmm. a whole bunch of extra right. lifters sure. in that weight class. So okay. Uh third announcement that came out uh recently Raw Nationals 2023, September 14th through 17th in Memphis, Tennessee. So uh I'm also excited about this. I've actually wanted to back when I was still in the meat director, doing the meat director gig, I wanted to run a meet in Memphis just because I've never been there and there hasn't been a meet there in a long time that I'm aware of. So uh, it was on my to-do list, but just never got around to it. And now nationals is there. So it's uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. That's awesome. Yeah. Does um, Memphis have a big airport to, um, to connect into? I don't even know. Uh, hmm. Southwest flies there. I don't know. I don't know. All that how, matters then. Yeah, I mean, I'm a Southwest <laughs> guy, so I don't, 
I don't know what all airlines they have there, but they do have a, a airport. So, oh, I figured and it's only, place, yeah, it's only a, it's only a five and a half hour drive from Atlanta. Right. So I'll probably be driving, but yeah. Cause by the time you do any airport stuff, that's more than, that's just about five and a half hours. If you're coming from Atlanta for sure. Well, cool. Let's so, move on. So to our, I, I, I just Googled this. So Mem- it's the Memphis international airport. Oh. Um, so they serve, they serve thousands of passengers Burgers. every month burgers <laughs> uh, sorry yeah, you really threw me off there um let's see allegiant air american airlines delta frontier southwest and united all fly to memphis okay so big enough so big enough yeah, yeah. you can get there i like tennessee i like i like uh chattanooga nashville memphis yeah. I've never it's been to Memphis, place. so I can't, I can't say for sure, but Chattanooga and Nashville are awesome. Yeah. Super clean cities. Yeah. So. I, I've, I've heard the opposite about, about Memphis, to be honest, but yeah. I, yeah, I've never been and I've never really talked to anybody. It's just like, you know, when you start searching cities and Google and things like you're going to get all kinds of stuff that, you know, you can't tell if it's accurate or not. Right. So, right. yeah give it the benefit of the doubt till, uh, till we go there and find out, but oh. it seems like a cool city. Um, I've, I've looked at it a little bit and again, that's why I wanted to go do a meet there because I wouldn't want to be going to do a meet in a new place that sucks. No point in that. No. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get into our intro songs. So we have our top five TV intro songs and this week we're on number three. All right. Why don't you start this time? I started the last couple. Oh, fine. I get to try to butcher other people's names this, <laughs> exactly. this week. Great. All right. So we're going to start with Wade Johnson. Big Wade. Um, his number three TV show intro song is Mission Impossible. Um, his reasoning behind this is one word, iconic. Say no more. All right. Say no more, apparently. Uh, Cameron Barillo had Friday Night Lights. It's a mood. Great to use as a reflective track on any powerlifting playlist. I don't know that one. Uh, Joe House had the monkeys. Oh, that's a great one. Why didn't I think of that? Um, the song is still played on classic radio channels uh, for sure. I mean, the monkeys. Yep. Yeah, that's a good one. Joe's yeah. got, Joe's had some, you know, pulling them out of the woodworks that are pretty yeah. good here. He's a sleeper list. He's a sleeper list. Oh. Uh, Don Dotson had cheers. Um, where everybody knows your name. Uh, the song directly connects me to the show. Yep. Directly. Yes. Directly. Gary Jacobs had Seinfeld, huh? Because he says one of the top five has to be Seinfeld. Yeah. I mean, it was on my list, so I can't argue that, but I actually made a mistake. I think, did we talk about this already? No. What was your mistake, Josh? Uh, well, I'll talk about it later. Let's get through the list okay. and then I'll talk about my mistake. Right. Um, Chris Peterson had growing pains. <laughs> yes. Music for this was far more interesting than the actual video portion, but it's a great song. Nice. Growing pains is a good, that is a good one. It's, it's, it's kind of nostalgic. Yeah. I don't know. It's a good one. Yeah. Let's Google that one. I don't remember it. Stacy Metcalf had the Simpsons longest running cartoon. Great for all ages embodies USA culture pretty accurate yeah yes uh I, so would you believe me if i told you i've never watched a full episode of the simpsons i would because i know how out of touch with the you are. <laughs> there <laughs> i walked right into that one uh <laughs> kenya calderon the best of both worlds uh hannah montana yes! again st- staple in a gen z's z- I, I can't read staple in a Gen Z Ed's childhood. I don't know what Gen Z Ed's is. Education, Gen Z education and child. I don't know. Probably more girls know this one though. Ha ha. Yes. Those are I, her words, not mine. My kids were of the Hannah Montana age. Um, we lost, we watched a lot of Hannah Montana. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Great song though. Yeah. And, and there's, um, 
there's another song from that Hannah Montana song that made it to my all time list of uh, great songs, but that's another episode. Andrew Cargill had Black Rover because it's catchy. Did he say catchy for every single reasoning? I think he might have. I don't know, but it's been a one word explanation. I got to say, I'm getting a little irritated by his explanations. It's given us nothing to talk about. Um, so just out of principle, I'm giving that two thumbs down. I don't know the show, but explanation needs some work. Not that our thumbs up or down mean shit. They don't. So, so take that. Um, Eric Cordero has mash a song called suicide is painless by Johnny Mandel might be the perfect intro for an anti-war TV show. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cindy Yeager had good old boys, Dukes of Hazard. Oh, come on. Really? I'm not the biggest country fan. And I like this one. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I love this pick. Um, it was on my list of like, I had like 20 that I really was debating and I obviously screwed up my list as I just mentioned earlier. I'll explain, but um, yes, that is a great song. Can't argue that at all. Definitely love the song. Um, actually, actually had it on my lifting playlist for a while. So there's that. Um, Amy Hutchinson had the monkeys. I had a dance that went along to this when I was a kid. If you ask nicely, I'll demonstrate sold mm-hmm. uh amy this is my official request i would love to see the dance that went along to that song we would greatly appreciate it um we we think you're awesome and this is us asking nicely yes and you should video it and um dm it to josh yeah and it won't make its way around the internet <laughs> at all <laughs> no for real i will not show it to anybody if that's the only way you'll send it to me got to see it though please yes but know that anything you you email or dm could become part of the internet and if you don't believe me um yeah get on netflix and watch the most hated man alive <laughs> uh Benica brown had march comes in like a lion season one this song makes me smile and music is awesome yep and uh to add to that, Bonica sent me a direct message after listening to to uh, our releasing number five. She's like, oh, man, she's like, I did a terrible job explaining it. So let me give you better reasonings. So that was her original uh, explanation. Her elaborated explanation for this one is it's such a cute, upbeat song. I enjoy hearing it and makes me smile. Just fun, darn it. It's mm-hmm. even a song to just chill to. See, that's, that's, so Mr. Cargill, that is an example of a well thought out uh, explanation. Like, I'm glad you don't run meets the way you explain your reasoning because you run darn good meets. So you kind of get a pass here, but your explanations of your songs are shit, (laughs) but you're damn good meet director. So you get a pass. So you get a pass. Okay. Oh, I can't remember if it was my turn or yours. Uh, it is my turn. Uh, Amber Riley has full house everywhere you look. Yes. That is also a very nostalgic song. The only reason you know the song is because of the show. That's true. Um, everywhere you look, everywhere's. Yeah. No. You don't know it? No. Oh, man. To Google that one, too. YouTube it. I'll YouTube it. Wow. I'm shocked. So I'm going to talk about this more. So there's actually a spinoff. I think it ended now, but it was called Fuller House. It was like a reboot and it had like the, the, it had, it was based around um, Candace Cameron's character. Uh, What was her name? Uh, What were the girl, the three girls? It was Michelle was the youngest one. Stephanie was the middle one. And the oldest one was who? Anyway, wow, I'm totally butchering this. I can't remember um, what I had for breakfast. All right, here's what I'm going <laughs> to do. That's all I have to say. <laughs> um, I'm going to Google it right now because I can't let this stand. Um, DJ, oh, duh. 
yeah, DJ, DJ Tanner. Anyway, it's the Fuller house has revolved around her. She's obviously grown now. She has her own kids and she was married and her husband's name, what last name was Fuller. So it's Fuller house uh, is, uh, is, yeah, and it's, it's the same, like they live in the, the original house. So it's like very nostalgic too, like, because you're in, back in the thing, but um, it's a, I don't particularly like the intro to the Fuller house because it's basically a modernized everywhere you look song. So it's the same song, just like modernized. So it's like, it's like the original versus the remake, you know, oh, that's fun. And yeah. And anyway, the original is always better. It's always better. Pretty much. Almost always better. Oh, that was kind of a cool story though. Uh, Michelle Carlasio <laughs> has uh, Sopranos because it's a badass song. It is. It is a badass song. So that's actually where I screwed up and I'll just, you know what? I'll, I'll talk about it now because we're on Sopranos. So I originally was going to put, I'm not going to say what it is because we're not there yet. Um, Amy, Amy pancake told me her number one song and I'm like, Oh yeah, that's gotta be on there. I think I mentioned that last week. Mm-hmm. So I had that scheduled to be my number five. And then at the last minute, I'm like, no, nah, I can't do that. I got to go with my originals. And I was supposed to put Sopranos in for my number five and I put Seinfeld in and I was actually going to have Seinfeld as my first one that didn't make it. So I actually snubbed the Sopranos accidentally when I submitted my list. And I feel like that was a big mess up on my part because Sopranos is a great intro song. Like I love, I'm not going to sing this one because it's kind of, you know, whatever, but I love the part where Tony Montana, Tony Montana, Tony Soprano is, uh, you know, in the intro, he's, he's smoking the cigar and he like does a puff of smoke as he's driving. And it's like shotgun shine or something like that. At that part, it's like my favorite part. It gets me excited every time. So, uh, so a minute ago, you said great story, Josh, but you, I could tell you didn't really mean it. So I'm going to end it there for the story because you're giving me the same, the same look like hey, wrap it up, man. Uh, so moving on, Amy pancake has good times. It brings back childhood memories. I would agree. Wesley Toller had firefly. Don't know what that is. This tune with the accompanying visuals perfectly captures the mood of this space Western that ended far too soon. The final shot of the spaceship flying over the herd of stampeding, stampeding horses is iconic. I, I think Wesley gets the, the win for all of his reasoning. Like, yeah, he's he's definitely had some. See a writer? You know what the, uh, I don't know. Hmm. He is a his he's a he's going to I don't know what he's going to school for, but he's like a physicist according to his uh instagram handle buff physicist mm, yeah buff so, physicist. so there you go yeah so he's smart i don't know pretty he's sure. smart yeah but yes i agree so you know what so what, i already did the random seedings for everything for the tournament in a couple of weeks but we should have probably used like the strength of the argument as a way to mm. seed people maybe we'll do that next time mm. um, yes but, make people actually give better reasoning yeah not yes. that the seating really matters because you still got to get the vote from the people, but right. And still popularity contest. Let's face it. Yeah, it's true. Um, I had for my number, what are we on three? Number three, three. song. I had Baywatch. Um, it, I think, do you know, do you know the theme song to Baywatch? Uh, probably, yeah. but I can't pick it, it up right now. All right. So it's basically like, I'll be ready. I'll be ready. So I actually sing this uh, in with uh, karaoke. Nice. <laughs> Hope or Hope has a friend. Um, I doubt she's listening, so I'll talk about her. Um, Hope has a friend, Emily, and she also loves the show Baywatch. And I'm actually watching it right now on Amazon Prime Video. Going, I'm on like season eight right now. But it's a great intro song. Um, it's a great '80s song. It's a great show, great intro scene. There's helicopters, swimsuits, boats, ocean, four wheelers. It's action and hype music, the whole intro. So I, I you can't go wrong with it. Um, be wrong. But when we do karaoke, uh, um, Emily and I always sing it. It's it's a two part, two nice. part. And nice. she always gets mad at me because I try to sing the, like the 
the main chorus and she's like no you're singing backup i'm like all right fine <laughs> your backup sorry josh yeah. all right uh, my number three is laverne and shirley um because just recently i heard this in the grocery store and i was just like this song is so awesome and it just like recaptures like part of my childhood and i just found myself singing along loudly and didn't care i was just having a moment i was having a good time so yeah. and you know to be honest my grocery store is out in the middle of nowhere and people come in in their pajamas and are frequently drunk uh, or in there because we live near like a, a big um, summer only community. People come in in their bathing suits and flip flops and shirts optional sobriety optional. Yeah. So I fit right in. Hmm. Sounds awesome. I mean, I wear, I do wear shirts and I'm not drunk, but yeah. I'm just weird. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I like, I like weirdo places like that. Like they're, I, I like them. Hey, but I live in the middle of nowhere. And if it wasn't for that community, I would have a really shitty grocery store. Yeah. So I'm happy about it. Cool. Can't say I'm sad about it. All right. New lifter tip. We're going back to power lifting. That was the power ballads part. Now we're into the power lifting part. New lifter tip. Practice your cues individually in the beginning. Trying to implement multiple things at once is not the most efficient way to learn. Agree or disagree, Josh? Oh, yeah, I agree. I think a lot of people, you know, they want to get good really fast. So, you know, and and a lot of, I think newer coaches want their lifters to get good really fast. So they try to correct everything. Like, here's the 12 things that you're doing wrong. Let's fix them all. On paper, that sounds great. But when you're in practice trying to like, as the lifter trying to comprehend everything and really focus on each one of those individual cues, that's just impossible. So you end up not really fixing any of them and you just kind of spin your wheels. So I think, you know, pick one or two, um, maybe three, but one or two typically that are the most priority need, the mo- most priority needed. I'm not even speaking well. Mm. Um, the biggest, the biggest gap in your, your technique or, or the execution and focus on those and really so get them locked in So when you say cue, what do you mean? Good question. Uh, you know the thing when you're playing pool, the white ball? <laughs> yes, not that. <laughs> not that. Um, so basically a cue is like something that elicits a response from the lifter. So everybody has cues that, you know, when I say cue, I'm sure you can think of like three or four things in your head that you've heard lifters say, coaches say, whatever, that might not apply to you. So even though it might be a great cue for somebody else, it might not actually help fix the issue that you have. So, you know, one of the, one of the cues I hear all the time is push with your heels. Well, yeah, that's great. If you're getting too far on your, too much pressure on your toes, that's good cue to help get a balanced foot. If you're already squatting with 90% of your weight on your heels and you yell, push with your heels, you're, you're already having an imbalanced pressure. So adding to it by focusing more on your heels is, is not going to help. It's going to, it's going to hurt. So, um, you know, a cue is basically something that is a quick, usually a one word or a two word thing. Um, something you can say real quick that has a more elaborate meaning to the lifter so that they remember to do step one, two, three, or whatever it is specific to that one cue. Right. Um, so and some of those get to almost be like, um, I don't know, part of the uh, routine. Like I remember every time I was at a meet and you were coaching me and I'd be walking out the, you know, a squat, be like, good steps, aggressive, yep. you know? Yep. And if you hadn't said that, I'd been like, well, something's wrong. Yeah. And, and <laughs> you know, if I were to yell that at somebody I've never worked with, it would mean right. nothing. Like what, what, like, what the hell are you talking about? So like, you know, it's, it's picking and choosing what you say to specific people based on what we've practiced and what that means to that person, you know? So, you know, those are just little things that, you know, you and I've worked on that that's something you always just needed a little reminder of, and it kind of helps you set your, set your pace of how you're executing, you know, Mm -hmm. just kind of got you off to the, to the right, on the right foot, I guess. So. Great. Yeah. So that's that's what I mean by that. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> all right. I think that does it for episode, whatever episode this is, 102. Um, 
we do want to thank 110%. They are our sponsor for the top five TV intro songs list. The winner of the tournament does get a $50 gift card from them. So definitely check them out. Follow them on Instagram, 110%. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns for us, you can shoot us an email at plballadspodcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at plballadspodcast and have a great day. Later. Bye now. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed today's episode of the Powerlifting and Power Ballads podcast, please remember to subscribe and share it with your friends.